Thunderstorm has ended. Any news on whether that's coming back? But so somebody wrote earlier. Who was it? Somebody said earlier that there was a Q and A with some high up woman, and they said that it has. She said that it has a lot of potential or huge potential or something like that, and that they're definitely bringing it back. And I don't think they gave much more info than that. I can't remember who said it. Somebody in chat wrote it, which I think that's good news, right? I I miss playing it like. This is the thing, I usually send the plunder from about 11 when I'm pretty dampened. So that we don't have any of these demon games where I'm like missing swaps and shit, you know? That's questionable from me at best, you know? So that's where the chill plunder comes in and I like that. It, to be honest, I'll, I'll be real, if they do standalone plunder and it pops off, I might even just switch, switch main game to plunder. Because I actually really enjoyed plunder and I actually felt like I was actually alright at it. So that's definitely an angle. Back on retail or just chilling? I've been playing a bit of Kata and a bit of retail, Rob. Um, but yeah, I, I, to be honest, I didn't play any arena since season seven Wrath. I've been playing classics, so just I was just I've been I'm pretty dampened, not dampened. I'm pretty washed with arena in general, just from not playing for a whole season. So just getting back into it in general. Plus, I haven't played any retail since. Well, I played like a hundred shuffles or something at the start of DF, and then before that, I played season one Shadowlands. Um, so yeah, it's been a little while since I've played any retail, so yeah, I'm just slowly getting back into it, but it's it's a lot to to pick back up, that's the thing. So much changes every every expansion. You kinda gotta get a feel for the game again and it's just solo shuffle is, is alright for like learning like abilities and stuff, but it's frustrating as hell man, I swear as well. And I don't like I don't like how gear focused it is. It's like if you don't if you don't have the min max stats, it just feels like because everything is so centered around doing a good PVE rotation. If you're not doing like a good PVE healing rotation with your good stats, you just fall behind with the dampening. That's the hard part. You just fall behind, and and when that happens, you just it's so hard to like reverse the momentum, right? Especially as disc, it's so hard to reverse that momentum as a healer. And get back into like actually choosing your globals rather than having them chosen for you because people are gonna die if you don't press that button, you know? Because you wanna be like a little bit creative in terms of like who you stun and who you fear and when you push for fears and stuff like that. But when you're behind or you feel like your heals are not uh providing enough to keep people safe, then it makes it really scary to push for fears and really risky. I don't really like that as much. Like I like the aspect of classic where most of the game you have choices to make you know and most of the game isn't isn't determined by okay i don't really have much choice in this you know these five out of ten globals or even like seven out of ten globals because if i try and be creative and do anything that's outside of my correct pve rotation i'm going to be falling behind even if the thing i'm doing works out if that makes sense so like say you you, you, you push for a risky fear or whatever, and it's like, even if you get it, you still have to use shit because you fell behind because you didn't do your PvE healing, you know? And I think that's a big thing that I prefer about Classic compared to Retail. It's, it's, there's a lot less choice in Retail. And that was what, what made Disc in Wrath so fun, actually. Disc in Wrath was like, you could dispel offensively, you could dispel defensively, you know, you could push for fear, you could play back and conserve mana, you could go for mana burns, you know? And set them up with your team. You could go for CC. You know, you could drink. You could go for efficient heals. You could go for fast heals. There was there's so many different things that you could do at any moment that there wasn't one right answer. You know, you could play a different strategy at a different time, and it could work. You know, there's like three, four different things that could work. And and the 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 awesome part about it was there was there would be an optimal strategy, but there wasn't one strategy. And there wasn't one avenue or route to the to the win, you know. There was multiple routes, and the 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 trick, right, where experience came in was picking that best route, and that's where the choice mattered, and that's what I thought was so cool. That's what I loved about about Wrath Arena and TBC as well, to a degree, not quite as much, but TBC was was fun for different reasons. But retail has different stuff as well, you know. You have to you have to. I think retail you have to have faster like reflexes almost. You know, you, if you react very quickly to somebody popping something or like going for CC on you and you fade it, you know, these things matter. And there's not that much like that in, in Classic. So there's definitely skills that you can develop and, and 
hone in, in retail that you almost don't need in classic. Although I would say there is a, a broader skill set that is required in classic. You just don't need it to as high of a level. You know, you need to adapt on the fly more. You need to have this experience to choose, you know, and have good decision making more. These sorts of things. The thing is, right, if you have a healer that goes 06, then all the DPS go 3-3, three, three, right? But that's, the, there's only two healers in the game, right? There's four DPS. And if you have one of the DPS that's a shitter, you go 4-2 in game. So you have more chance that one of the DPS is a shitter and you get some nice free rating than one of the healers is a, shitting, uh, is, is a shitter and nothing happens, right? That you go 3-3. Three, three. Whereas for for the healer, there's there's less chance of that happening, because if the other healer it, like if if one DPS is bad, you go three three. The DPS goes oh six, and you go three three. And there's more chance that that happens, right, than the other healer being bad. I think there's there's I mean, to be honest, retail is kind of like Pandora's box, and you can't really go back on a lot of the stuff. But for me, I think that retail has too much mobility to start with on on just just in general. Most classes have too much mobility for me. Um, and as a result of that, most casters have too much... And, and healers, to be fair, have too much value put on instant spells. Like, look at the Holy Priest kit, right? Serenity, Pom, Renew, Sanctify, Flash Shield Procs. You know, you're, all your cooldowns are all instant. You have a fucking spirit so that if you actually have to cast, you know, and channel, okay, they can't stop it. Most of your shit is instant slash unstoppable. You occasionally have to cast flash heals. That's it. And the reason for that is because of high mobility and high amounts of ranged interrupts and stuns and CCs. Because if everything was cast, you'd never get anything off. And so because of all this range, uh, because of all this mobility and, and ranged instant CC and stuff like that, you have to have all these instants having high value because otherwise all the melee would run all over the casters, right? So this, the problem starts with the mobility. And that, that's one of the things that's good about Classic. There's, like, mobility is 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 precious. You know, you have to use it carefully and use it well because it's powerful. Holy had this... To be fair, Holy has a lot of the same kit and kata, but there's a lot less um, value put on it. This is what I mean, right? By the, the, the strength of the instant spell versus the cast spell, there's a lot more value in actually getting a cast off. You know, if you get a greater heal off in kata, it's like 20, 21, 22k non-crit if you get a serenity off it's like 10k so in terms of actual healing done yeah the serenity is way safer to press and it's it's actually really mana efficient as well it's one of your main strength as a holy priest in kata but if you want actual raw value from the spell and this is just one example right the the cast is really really strong but kata is is the place where that started decreasing a lot as well you know if you look at mages like frost mage and wrath is way better designed than frost mage and kata because Frost Mage and Kata is a lot more about just spamming Ice Lance because it's safe, right? And it does good damage and, and you can do it without there's being a chance you get stopped on it. So this is the thing, right? I would I would personally reduce mobility, put more actual value on casting than instance. I think instance should be a safe option that isn't as powerful as the casting alternative. And I would reduce the amount of instant CC that every class has. Like every class having some random ranged CC or instant CC or stop or whatever... It's just too bloated. And speaking of bloat, that's another thing. There's way too much random passive bloat flying around. You know, you're almost sifting through the bloat in these games to find the stuff that's actually meaningful and, and react accordingly to that. You know, there's 80% of the stuff in the game maybe has like 20% of the impact, right? And then 20% of the stuff has like 80% of the impact. And this is why when you're not pressing cooldowns, a lot of the like random rotational stuff in between doesn't matter as much, especially before dampening hits. Dampening, you know, obviously makes everything matter a bit more, but it's, like, artificial. But obviously, they're, they're never going to do any of this stuff, right? Because they're not... Like, the PvP doesn't matter to them. It's not, not part of their big plan. PvP is a minigame. It's an afterthought. It's not part of the business model. Yeah. The game is designed for PvE. We get what we're given. I and mean, be happy about it. But it is what it is, boys. It is what it is. I mean, look at the amount of money they actually invest into AWC. It's minimal. Absolutely minimal. If PvP was part of the business model, you would see a lot more changes at, like, making the game more spectator-friendly, for one. Just because PvP isn't part of other MMOs' business model doesn't mean it's also not part of Blizzard's business model. It's, like, it's irrelevant what other MMOs are doing. Like, yes, there's some investment into the PvP scene, but that's because there always has been. 
you know, we always had BlizzCon and whatnot since original TBC. Just like, if you're honest with yourself and think, if Arena didn't exist, would they put Arena in the next expansion? Obviously, it's a no. You know, not in a million years. I think PvP is this, this, this something that Blizzard considers, like especially Arena, something that Blizzard considers a mistake and an absolute pain in their ass to actually have to manage and uh, spend, you know, a semblance of balance and development time on in order to keep a really small percentage of their player base happy because it's a vocal percentage of their player base, right? Like a lot of the people, and this is the thing, right? A lot of the people, not that many people PvP, but a lot of the views that they get on Twitch, right? For If you, if you look at how many views PvP gets on Twitch, PvP is just in general PvP streamers, right? Compared to the PvE streamers. like, And now compare that to the PvP player base compared to the PvE player base, you know? It's it's astronomically higher, right? The number of people actually watching the PvP per pl- person that actually PvPs. So obviously, it's it's you know going to be something that's vocal and is is part of the publicity for the game, right? Which Blizzard wants to keep in a positive space. So if they just axed fucking AWC now, like the amount of negative you know vibes that would come from that from all these streamers that are putting you know opinions and whatnot that people listen to out there. It's going to be very high. So it's worth it for this small fee, so to speak, to keep that in check. And I think that's all they're trying to do, right? They're just keeping it ticking over. Yeah, streamer, streaming, streamers is like a huge ad for them. I mean, of course, of course the top PvE is a vocal. That's not not what I'm, what I'm saying, right? What I'm saying is the, the, the vocal minority as a percentage of the overall player base of that content is way higher, right, for PvP than for PvE. That's my point. Like, it, it doesn't, it almost doesn't cost them anything, right, to keep the PvE vocal minority happy or, you know, in a good space because that's who they're designing the game for anyway, right? That's who the majority of their subs are coming from. So why wouldn't they want to please those people? Of course they do. You know, they, ple- they try and please those people regardless of what the vocal minority is saying. But they don't, if there was no PvP vocal minority, why the fuck would they care about, you know, putting on PvP tournaments and balancing the game you know, and making all these PvP happy at, at, you know, expense to themselves for, you know, less than 1% of the player base in terms of subscriptions. It's not it's not financially viable. It's a stupid fucking model. Of course they wouldn't do that. It makes no sense. But it's this is the thing. This is where the downward spiral that started in Kata, the first fucking Kata, 15 years ago or whatever, this is where the downward spiral happened. Because Wrath, we had all-time high numbers for PvPers. All-time high. And if you look at the viewership of the TBC tournaments, they had like, we had like fucking pay-per-view 360p streams for fucking MLG in the TBC, right? It was dog shit. It was complete dog shit. And you still had like 100 concurrents, 100k, sorry, concurrents on these, these PvP, these tournament streams. It was fucking huge. Compare that to now. And this is where the, the downward spiral happened, right? In Rath, at the end of the Wrath of Lich King, start of Kata. I think it was start of Kata. Wrath of Lich King was still pretty big in terms of numbers. Kata turned a lot of people away from the game. A lot of PvPers didn't like Kata and quit the game. And this is when League came along as well, right? And a lot of PvPers just jumped ship, went to League, went to Dota. TBC was was even higher, Matty. I think Mop was more than Kata, but it definitely wasn't all-time high. Because you could look at the... I mean, a lot of the tournaments were go- already gone by Kata. Like MLG gave up and all this shit. Because there just wasn't the... You know, there wasn't the viewership. It couldn't make money off it. But yeah, so, I mean, this is where the downward spiral happened, right? What they needed to do, and obviously it's easy to say in hindsight, but they needed to split off the game. If you look at all the the arena tournament realms and how popular they were, you could go and log on the arena tournament realm, the Blizzard one, not the the private server. They they used to have uh, tournament realms, right, for qualification for BlizzCon. And you could log on that shit at 3 a.m. and go to fucking, you could queue up at 3 a.m. and you'd get an instant pop at basically any rating. You could go to fucking, you know, outside Stormwind, outside Ironforge, outside Org, and it would be heaving. Dude, there was fucking... You'd sometimes make a character and spawn, like, in fucking Exodar and shit, right? And there were vendors and shit everywhere, right? You could go to Exodar, and there was people everywhere PvPing and dueling and shit. It was absolutely fucking rammed, bro. There were so many people playing at all times. And this is the thing, right? This is where they should have split the game off. They should have seen this, and they should have split the game off into a PvP mode with... Just more adjustments, right? Completely forget about where, where you know, look look what they're doing with Plunderstorm, right? It's completely out there. And okay, yeah, this is the kind of thing that would have been way too 
the, the, the concept of it, I don't think, would have fit with Blizzard at the time, right? But Plunderstorm is so out there, and they're just making, making these huge changes. They're making it visibly easy to understand, right? Every ability is very, very easy to understand visibly. You don't really need to watch and understand, and having played the game, to understand it while you're watching. You can, you can still watch it and enjoy it. You know, the concept is awesome in terms of a, a spectator game and, and you know, eSport or whatever. The, the tournaments are fun. They're not... They don't take themselves too seriously, but there is a skill element element to them as well. It's just, yeah, like it's bang on, right? And this is what they had to do with with WoW after Wrath of the Lich King. I'm not saying like, okay, they needed to make Plunderstone, but they needed to make it more visually understandable, which means, you know, better animations for certain outplays and specifics. Uh, they needed to reduce bloat uh, while keeping the skill cap high. And, and, you know, then they could start running basically automated tournaments. And, you know, this would have kept the PvP activity really, really high. Make constant adjustments, you know, balance patches, whatever. The way they do with League, right? Keeps it fresh. And then you run an automated tournament every couple of months. You have a fucking ladder. At the end of the ladder, the teams that qualify off the ladder get to play in the tournament. The tournament gets streamed. You can spectate it in-game. You have some fucking cash prize to enter the tournament. It costs a bunch of WoW tokens. Done. You know, it's like they had... They had this opportunity. They didn't take it. PvP base dwindled, and now we are at where we are, where it's no longer viable to do these things for the game because there's not enough people to do it for. So the money isn't there. And this is why I'm ex I'm actually so excited about Plunderstorm, right? Because Plunderstorm is a chance to have that back. It's a chance to, to, to do those things that WoW missed out on. And I just hope they don't don't miss that chance because it's it could be really, really fun. It could be really, really big. Plunderstorm was very popular in a PvP event. A lot of people tried it, but you had many PvEs complaining it pandered to PvPers and they did it anyway. The, the thing is, right, the PvEers wanted their transmogs, right? And I think that was the, the problem, right? They they almost forced these PvEers into doing an event that they, they don't they don't ever PvP, they didn't want a PvP, and now they have to do a PvP event to get to get these uh these transmogs, right? And then they don't partake in the actual PvP of it, right? They just go on the edge of the gas, they you know, farm some mobs and they quit. And then they complain that it's boring without even trying. They don't even give it a shot at PvPing because, you know, God forbid they might like it and be a PvPer. You know, they're such a proud PvEer. They want to never have anything to do with PvE and those low life. You know, it's like they're almost doomed to not like it before they even start because they don't even try and play it the way it's meant to be played. Instead, they're like, oh, yeah, we should make this a PvE only event. Like, what? Like, okay, give them a PvE only version if you want, but it's just like... There's other people to attract to your game as well, not just the people that are playing WoW. And this is why it should go free to play, in my opinion. Free to play standalone. Because there'll be a lot of people, like the people that are complaining about it are the WoW PvP PvEers. Okay, fine. Game isn't aimed for those guys. Do you want to do a little mode for them so that they can get their transmogs? Maybe. But I think that the more important thing is establishing the game as, a, as, as, you know, a decent PvP game that is accessible to fucking everyone. It's not just it's not just WoW. It's advertised as, as WoW, basically. It's not WoW. It's nothing to do with WoW. And this is the thing. When you force people to go and download 90 gigabyte WoW and get a sub, if they don't play WoW, they're like, fuck that, I'm not doing that. I don't I, I don't want to play WoW. So if they want to do it as a gateway to WoW, it's, this is not the way to do it. The way to do it is to make it free to play and then have the battle pass be the sub. And then they can be like, oh, well, I'm sub to WoW anyway. I might, just, might as well fucking try it, you know? But that's the perception, Joseph. This is what matters, what people think they need to do. So if they, I mean, if they did this, I think Plunderstorm would absolutely pop off. So many people would play it. It would be huge. And they would make significantly more money than if they had it in the sub model. And, and I, honestly, I think they would get more subs doing it this way than, than just having it sub only. Because people, like you'd have floods of people coming to it as free to play. And they'd be like, oh, sweet. Yeah, no, I want to sub for this battle pass. Congrats. Now, now you know, you have... Now you have fucking, you know, 30, 40% of whatever, 10, 20 million people grabbing a WoW sub versus 100k people that were already subbed anyway, playing it. You know, it's, okay, these are fucking random ass numbers, but you get my point, right? Blizzard did not do a good job at marketing Plunderstorm, and yeah, it requires a sub, which is the biggest deal breaker from these. Completely agree. I think that the marketing for it was almost non existent, um, it just popped up out of nowhere. A lot of people didn't even know about it. For me, for me, I think that this was a very, and I completely agree with you. I think this was a, I think somebody else said this was a test 
this was a, a complete low budget, low risk test to see what the interest and the popularity of it was. And I think if you look at how many people were watching those tournaments and have watched those tournaments and the general activity of it, considering that the marketing was basically non-existent, I would, I would personally regard that as a big success. And it, by the sounds of it, based off that interview, they, them saying that it has a lot of potential, they think it's that, that the, the test was a success as well. And I think that's really positive. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with it. I hope that they don't just let it go. And by the signs of it, they won't. I think they've committed enough time and resources to it that they're not just going to let it rot. So yeah, we'll see. Hopefully we get something like ranked. Hopefully we get something free to play. We get more people involved playing the game. You know, that would be fantastic. I feel like more people watch those tournaments to see Jimmy. They like go at it. Not because they really like Plunder. But that's good too, right? That's fine. You know, if 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 they if they are enjoying watching their favorite streamer play something, that's fine. That's all that's required, you know? They don't have to play the game. They don't have to love the game. It's it's marketing. Streamers equals marketing. Hopefully they don't take any development time slash resources from the actual game though. Yeah, no, I I I mean I think that it's it's splitting the team like that is not the way to go. I think that it should be a separate team with their own resources. Um and I think that the the test was arguably um, like almost like a proof of concept to justify that. And I think that's, you know, a good way of going about it. Otherwise, why do a tournament for it at all? You know, there's no reason. So I, I, I agree. I agree with a lot of people in the chat, actually. Anyway, that was like a fucking 30 minute monologue. I feel like um, I am definitely going to sleep now. Uh, it was a pleasure chatting to you guys. I like uh, I like doing these little little back and forths at the end of the stream. Actually, it's nice to chat to some of you.